Hello, it's Natasha. Happy to see you here. Some time ago, I shared these two cards on my Instagram, which I created um, unexpectedly using some leftover die cuts, so leaf die cuts, uh, which um, were so some leftovers from another project and a gel plate. Um, so, and I well, a disclaimer, I'm not a mixed media artist at all. I just silently admire. I'm subscribed to several um, mixed media artists here on YouTube and on Instagram, and I really admire what they create. But uh, I'm, you know, very slowly trying things with mixed media. And I've had this gel plate for quite a while. Um, and I haven't really played much with it. I've tried it a couple of times. I really loved it. And I really loved how these cards turned out. And um, so I would like to share with you today a couple cards um, which, you know, allow you to play, maybe step out of your comfort zone a little bit, play. Uh, maybe you also have a gel plate and you don't really use it that much. I'm sure that for seasoned um, mixed media artists and people who use their gel plate regularly, this video will be useless. Um, but maybe for those of you who are new to gel plates and uh, and just want to play and or who are maybe more of clean and simple card makers like I am. Um, so I would like to share with you a couple ideas that you can use your gel plate for to create this clean and simple uh, minimalistic card. So um, I have prepared some things. So as I said, I'm going to create a couple of cards. I want to create one sort of autumn card and I'm going to use this die cut from Pinkfresh Studio. It's a very intricate foliage frame inset and all the links, all the supplies will be linked below. But as always, I do encourage you to go through your stash and just look for something that will work for your uh, card or for your idea. So this is a very intricate um, die and it's really really beautiful but it, it's really delicate and it's really intricate so I would like to play with it and for this card I'm going to use uh, some yellow and orange colors of Distress Oxide inks and then I'm going to create another card which is more of a winter uh, winter themed and holiday themed. Uh, for this I die cut some snowflakes. I have these snowflakes in my stash. I don't even remember what company it is. Um, and so, but I'm sure that many of you have snowflake dyes or even if you don't, you can cut the snowflakes yourself, right? Like we would do when we were kids. And for this I'm going to use some blue um, shades of Distress Oxide inks. I will need my uh, brayer, uh, my gel plate, and I also have prepared a template. So I'm going to make one card will be square. So uh, this is just thin um, scrap paper. And I created a template. This The opening is three and a half by three and a half. And this is four and a half and four and a half. So I have this panel um, and I'm going to place my panel here. And this way I will have a lovely white border around my um, print. And another card uh, for this die cut, I'm going to use just, um, I will create just a regular A2 size card and we'll see how it goes. All right. Let's have some fun. Okay, so I have just a piece of scrap paper to uh, roll off excess ink. And so now I'm going to add some ink onto my gel plate. And as I said, I am not at all um, a master in this. So, um, and I'm sure there are a lot of amazing videos uh, here on uh, YouTube. So, but I'm just playing around 
and I hope you have fun together with me. So I wanted uh, to create some texture, additional texture, and uh, there are some special tools in mixed media world. You can use maybe a sponge, um, but I'm just going to use the tip of my um, of, a, of a, just a brush and uh, maybe create some waves. I'm not sure that if you can see anything of these, any of these. Now I'll place my uh, template and I'm going to put, place my snowflakes. I will put the biggest one here and then I want to create uh, something like uh, maybe so and so some of the snowflakes will be, um, you know, off. So I have four, and let's add one more, maybe here. Okay. And here's my panel. So I'm placing it in this uh, pencil square that I have, so the guide, um, so that my print is centered. And now we really, really need to press this because. Um, I'm using a hundred um, pound of uh, cardstock, and I actually think that maybe eighty would work even better. But it turns out I don't have um, thinner cardstock in my stash, so I'm just going to rub my um, snowflakes so that the cardstock really, really presses into the plate. And if you have a clean brayer, oh, actually, I do think I have a clean brayer. So let's, maybe we can use it to, you know, really. Okay. Are you excited? I am. So let's, let's see what we have. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just learning. Oh, what do you think? I think it's cute. I like it. Uh, these waves, I don't know if you can see them. They're really, really subtle, but, but they are there actually. Okay, now let's make the second card. Um, oops. So uh, distress oxide inks are obviously very easy to clean. Um, just use water and I rinsed uh, my brayer under just running water okay so I'm I'll put my mask here and now our cut stuck so I'm going to trim um, this cut stock to a two size card around my frame. Hopefully this frame works well. Oh, look, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, inky fingers, happy heart. Or that's how they say it. Okay. Let's see what we have this time. Oh. <gasps> Awesome. Okay, great. Okay, so I have two panels, one square um, and one is A2 size. I have already cut it out. Um, and I also have this um, sort of um, the, the one that the die that I used for a mask and it can actually, it turned out in lovely autumn color um, frame and you can use it on a card to create a clean and simple uh, card so you can use it um, for another project or you can reuse it again as a mask all right so now I will quickly assemble my cards and I will get back to you okay here are two my two simple um, I think quite clean and simple cards that I created using my gel plate and 
Uh, it's a good way to stretch your dyes as well, right? To create masks. For this card, so I used dark brown for the card base. I added some dark brown splatters. And I also added, I don't know if you can see it, but I added this frame using a ruler and my gold uh, gel pen. And this die cut, uh, the word is from this big sentiment set. From it's a collaboration with print from um, between Pinkfresh Studio and Scrapbook.com. Thin word, everyday script. So there are a lot of beautiful, um, great words. So, um, and this card, I used my silver gel pen. And I added this one key frame around my print. Um, I hit embossed uh, my sentiment, which is a small sentiment set from the stamp market in silver and adhered it. Uh, I hit embossed it on vellum and adhered it to my panel and added some Pink Fresh Studio jewels to embellish the card a little bit. And there, there are so many ways you can actually you could actually doodle the stars and you could actually um you know trace these stars using your um gel pen or a marker maybe uh and it will create a totally different look so um thank you very much for your time i hope you are inspired to play with your dies and with a gel plate if you have one and if you don't maybe you will consider getting yourself one because it's really fun and it's really addictive and you don't have to be a mixed media artist to play with it um i'm not and i think i think it worked out pretty well okay thank you very much for your time have a great day and see you again soon bye